Well, all the figures seem to paint an even rosier picture ahead. And as our correspondent, Rowie Ruttenberg, reports from the IMF World Bank meetings right here in D.C., the optimism about China's growth is in the air. Well, many people around the world are naturally watching very closely the economic data that's coming out of China. And this is a gathering of some of the world's best and brightest economists. If it's true that when China sneezes, the world catches a cold, it also holds that when China feels better, the world starts recovering. And that's what we're hearing from people here, that growth in China equals economic growth in the rest of the world. And specifically, the figure put out on Friday of 6.7 percent for the first quarter, which is less than previous quarters, people here stress still represents significant growth compared to the rest of the world. One American investor I spoke to said he remains optimistic about investing in China. When you look at the securities industry, um, there are a number of different areas, particularly the futures uh, industry, where they just are only going to begin to advance forward. People are looking at the, you know, what, what is the People's Bank of China going to do? Nations such as Nigeria and other emerging market players are beginning to bring the yuan into the reserve currencies. And I believe that's just an indication as far as, you know, the opportunities going forward. So I'm, we're very, very optimistic at the AI group with regards to where China's going. Well, the effects of China's economic growth, both positive and negative, can be seen in the ripples felt around the world, but perhaps nowhere as intensely than as in China's immediate neighbors. And I spoke with an executive from one of Mongolia's leading banks who told me that the figures coming out on Friday spell good news for that country. 87 percent of their exports go to China. Of course, it's mainly commodity-driven uh, related to the steel industry. Uh, and it's good to see that the uh, rate is uh, maintaining uh, at 6.7 percent on a sizable economy is still a lot of a lot of growth. Mongolia depends on China, as I've just said, and if it continues to grow at that rate, it means we'll continue to need to uh, import significant commodities such as copper, coking coal, iron ore, and a few others, which uh, Mongolia is, is now becoming very dependent on. Now, some of the people we spoke to did say that there is some concern that these figures could be partially inflated by Chinese lending policies recently put in place to stimulate growth. There is a question of how long China can maintain those policies, at least in the coming quarters, and many will be watching closely to see what sort of policies, what sort of changes come out of Beijing in the near future. Rui Ruttenberg, CCTV in Washington.